I come from uh, Guangzhou S People's Hospital, which is the largest uh, a specialized infectious disease uh, hospital in southern China, and most of the patients uh, of infectious disease is patients. Um, we have a very, very big cohort. Uh, we are following up uh, more than uh, 13, 13 uh, thousand uh, that's patients in the clinic. Uh, today, it's my great honor to uh, talk about the challenges in the management of advanced HIV disease from the clinical perspective. Uh, this is the first time for me uh, to give so a big topic in so important uh, inter international conference. Yeah, so um, I will try my best to make myself uh, clearly understood. It's well known. Uh, since the introduction of antiretroviral therapy, um, the prevalence of advanced HIV disease has been decreased, has decreased a lot in uh, developed countries. And you can see that uh, from this, uh, this uh, picture, uh, this is the number of new HIV infection globally in 2016. And you can see that uh, from uh, 2010, the number of new HIV infections has decrease a lot, but in many countries, in many uh, low and uh, middle income uh, countries and with uh, uh, limit resources, uh, the prevalence of um, advanced HIV disease is still uh, very, very high. And you can see from the right picture, and um, for the developed countries, yeah, for the high income countries, uh, the curve, this curve, that's a red curve, is the high income countries, yeah, the, this, the blue one is uh, low and middle income countries. All of, the, all of uh, these countries, uh, the proportion of people with advanced HIV disease has decreased, but still, it's still very, very high, especially in low and middle income countries. And you can see that in about 32, 40% of people with HIV infection starting ART uh, in this country have advanced uh, HIV disease, especially uh, the male has more than 50% in 2015. So how about the prevalence of H advanced HIV disease in China? According to the government uh, report in 2017, you can see that yeah, the alive people H with HIV infected is more than, is about uh, 437,000. But for those with AIDS disease per patients, is 321,000. So uh, the, the percentage of AIDS patients in this HIV infected patients is about 42.3%. Uh, 40, it means most of the patients still have advanced HIV disease uh, with a low CD4 count, less than 200. And for the top five uh, province with high uh, HIV province, uh, is the Yunnan and Sichuan and Guangxi and Henan and Guangdong. Guangdong is the uh, the number is the number five. So let's let's have a look at uh, the prevalence of new report HIV infection in Guangdong province uh, from 2006 to 2016. Um, up to 2016, we have a reported number of HIV positive or an OAS per cases alive more than uh, uh, nearly. 47,000 uh, patients, including uh, about 39% of AIDS patients. And the death number because of HIV or AIDS is uh, 15,000. And for the newly reported patients, even though in 2016, we still have about 30% of patients with advanced HIV disease. And what's the leading cause, death cause of HIV or AIDS patients in China? There are some data from Shanghai and, Guang, and Guangdong. And you can see in, in, Guang, in Shanghai, the cause of death among HIV infected in patients in Shanghai from 2006 to 2025, the number one is PCP, and the second one is um, 
NTM or TB infection, and the third one is AIDS-related encephalopathy, yeah, and, and then uh, the bacterial pneumonia. But in, in, China, in Guangdong, there's a different province, yeah, the situation is a little different, and this is the study uh, held in the the Guangzhou AIDS People's Hospital, uh, the total number of admitted patients is 3,406. They are the death, uh, the death number is 345. Among the patients who, who die, uh, the, mo the most important uh, reason is the opportunistic infections. Among these opportunistic infection. The number one uh, cause is a severe pneumonia, including NT, uh, PCP and other uh, pneumonia. And NTM or a TB is the second one. The telomycosis is the third one. And the first one is a critical meningitis. So we can see that um, TB, telomycosis, and Critical meningitis is the main reason for the patients who die in in in, Guang, in Guangdong province. Yeah, uh, let's talk about TB first. It's well known that the TB is the leading cause of mortality and the mortality among uh, people live, living with HIV worldwide. And this is the data of globally. Uh, the there's a 10 10.4 uh, million uh, people with TB, and about 11% of these people with TB has HIV positive. And um, in China mainland, um, for the HIV infected patients, 7.2% uh, of the patients have H H a, a TB co infection. And for AIDS patients, um, the co infection with TB is 20. 22.8%. And for TB, we still have a lot of uh, challenges. For example, uh, the first one is diagnosis. Um, TB, co-infected co HIV, is not easy to diagnose because of the high, uh, there's a lot of uh, reasons. So we have a high undiagnosed rate in um, TB and HIV co-infected patients compared with HIV negative uh, ones. Uh, the main reason is that this uh, typical clinical laboratory and the radiology features and the patients produce less sputum and the first negative result from the TB sputum and smear a test. And another one is the low detection of TB skin test and interferon gamma release test. And for those patients, they have, a, they have a very high uh, prevalence of uh, extra pulmonary and latent TB, yeah. So that may um, co-infected, co-infection TB, with TB is difficult to diagnose. For, for this situation, it will lead to a lot of problems. Uh, for example, the latent PB will be acti ac activated and the TB will, be, will uh, disseminate uh, to uh, multiple organs and TB could be transmitted to uh, others and make a TB more and more common. And, and for this TB, it will develop some resistance problem and the less. So diagnosis is very, very important for us to, uh, to, to deal with, uh, how to make a good diagnosis. And for the treatment and the prevention prophylaxis against uh, the uh, TB and HIV co-infection, and WHO and, Chi and the Chinese guideline uh, recommend the preferred therapy to, uh, to give patients initial uh, phase uh, two months of uh, the regimen, including four standard uh, medicines. And the total uh, dual therapy is six to 12 uh, months. And for the prevention preferences, yeah, we, we could use uh, as, as an as, yeah, for, for nine months. But in China, we still have a lot of uh, problems uh, for this one because uh, for those patients, they have poor or prolonged response to uh, TB treatment, and they have a lot of uh, drug and drug interruption between uh, anti TB uh, treatment and the antiviral therapy. And these medicines can cause a lot of toxicity. And for us, um, some patients they will have a 
very, 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 as we are joined this, yeah, some, something like, and we could, we could have to discontinue anti-TB treatment. And there's another problem, if we give the patients uh, ART, uh, they will develop the iris, or they might have a relapse of TB. And for the pre uh, prevention treatment, it's so difficult for us to, to exclude active TB. We want to provide with the preemptive therapy. And if we give the patients with TB uh, with the preemptive therapy, it will cause some drug resistance. And for all these things, we don't have in, insufficient data uh, in China. The second one, very, very important uh, opportunistic infection is telomycosis. Telomycosis is uh, one is the most common fungal infection in its patients in uh, southern China, in Southeast Asia. It's a very, very special uh, fungal infection. It can cause a lot of uh, symptoms, but these symptoms are not atypical. Uh, and then you can see that this, uh, the map, this the endemic areas of telomycosis, yeah, it, including uh, south, uh, the southern China, yeah, this red one is the, the, the hot spot for tachymycosis in, in Thailand and Vietnam and Indonesia. Yeah, a lot of uh, southern uh, Southeast Asia has a lot of uh, cases. And in China, you can see from this map, there are some cases reported yeah, up to now. You can see, oh, not many, but you can, you, you have to think that's only the reported cases. Yeah, it's only the what the top of the snowball. So so very very small number. Yeah, in in China, in southern China, Guangxi and Guangdong has a lot of cases with mycomycosis. In the hospital I'm working in, every year we have more than uh, 300 patients. Yeah, so um, the situation has been underestimated. For tachomycosis, if you want to make the diagnosis, the gold standard is to do the direct microscopy of, and then if you find the yeast with transverse, a transverse superceptor septum, yeah, and then you can diagnose, but uh, uh, another very, very important diagnosis method yeah, is to confer with culture. Uh, these fungus can demonstrate the thermal dimorphism and the red pigment in 25 uh, Celsius degree. But there are some other uh, problems with, it, with this diagnosis because uh, for this uh, culture diagnosis, you have to wait at least five to seven days and then possibly if, when you have the diagnosis, the patient might have died. Yeah. So the delayed diagnosis is, is a very, very uh, important issue for us to, to deal with. And another one is the low sensitivity and the specificity for us to diagnose the, this disease. And you can see that uh, for blood culture, it's the positive is only 70%, and the skin lesion, much better, and the bone marrow, yeah, much, much better, but it's still very, very low specificity. And if you want to do bone marrow uh, culture, and, you, and if you want to get to the tissue yeah, from the patients, you have to do the try, that's a traumatic operation for them, so that's not good for our, our patients. So we need new uh, diagnostic methods, yeah, which is very rapid and uh, highly sensitive and specific and feel that it's a field accurate and cost effective. We could use a PCR to do the test and we try many uh, methods to improve the sensitivity of PCR, but you can see that the PCR, the positive, the sensitivity of PCR is not very good. We have tried the ITS, we have tried the MP1, uh, but the sensitivity only about, uh, that's a, less than uh, say 70, even though we, we, give, the, we uh, give the test before uh, antifungal therapy, it's still only around the 70%. So if we want to get the good uh, the diagnosis, yeah, it's, it's still 
the problem, the low sensitivity and all the laboring. So um, that's because the cell wall of the fungus is very thick. It's very difficult for us to break the cell wall to let the DNA out. So it's very important for us to develop some enzyme or ultrasound to break the cell wall and make the sensitivity higher. And another one uh, that novel diagnosis for uh, tachymycosis is cellular diagnosis. And we have one very, very good method, MP1P. MP1P is the uh, special uh, antigen located on the cell wall of uh, telomyces. And this is the study uh, from uh, Guang Guangzhou. Uh, we test more than 8,000 uh, HIV infected patients, uh, there are about less, uh, about 9% patients have uh, MP1P positive. Uh, according to the different uh, CD4, more the, uh, that's a low CD4, higher uh, proportion, higher positive rate. And we did some uh, study uh, with the, um, there's the, the one company uh, in, in in Beijing, and for this one, yeah, we we test the, the kit of 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 MP1P. The sensitivity can is almost uh, eighty two percent. It's better than the culture, the blood culture, and the specificity is is also good, yeah, ninety one percent. And and if we use the fresh blood, we can increase the sensitivity. But even though we have the MP1P kit, we still have a lot of challenges because we need to evaluate the value for screening of AIDS patients with low CD4 before the antiretroviral therapy. And we haven't uh, evaluated the value of uh, early diagnosis uh, by the master of MP1P. And we have uh, another challenge for preemptive therapy against tachymycosis. If we can screen MP1P for those patients with low CD4, and we give these patients fluconazole for preemptive therapy, it, they might start continue um, developing to disseminate this tachymycosis. This data uh, based on the, this hypothesis is based on the, uh, the critical, uh, critical meningitis study, yeah, because in, in those patients with uh, and this, uh, critical antigen positive, we gave them a fluconazole for prevention. The mortality has decreased a, a, a lot. So we need some clinical trial for preemptive therapy. And for the treatment, yeah, we have an uh, international treatment guideline for uh, tachymycosis uh, with uh, amphotelin CB, and then switch to itraconazole or valiconazole switch to uh, itraconazole. But you can see that uh, the first uh, standard strategy is, is based on the study held 20 years ago. It's very, very, very old. So we need to update our treatment strategy because now we have some new uh, medicines. Uh, for example, valiconazole uh, yeah, and other uh, medicines. Uh, this is the, uh, the trial, uh, the, uh, the trace uh, study that they published uh, last year uh, comparing itraconazole. Uh, and amphotelin B. And you can see that amphotelin B has a very, very good effect to uh, eradicate uh, this fungus. And you can see um, amphotelin B and itraconazole, um, that's the, the fungal clearance is much better than another group. And the maturity of uh, two groups, uh, amphotelin B, is much better uh, than other group. But in China, we still have some uh, challenges for the treatment uh, because uh, for this medicine, we have some fungal drug associated toxicity and uh, we, have, we don't have evidence based uh, new antifungal strategy and some antifungal medicine are very, is very, very expensive. If we want to combine the two medicines, it will be, uh, have, we, will have, we will have to uh, spend a lot of money, and we, we don't have too much, too many uh, novel antifungal regimens. Uh, this is a case uh, for, uh, our, from uh, our hospital. There's a 
uh, the patient with very, very severe uh, tachylomycosis. And when the patient came to the hospital, he has fever uh, more than four weeks. And the culture, both myeloculture culture and the blood culture, negative the CD4 only four, but MP1 P is positive, and they have some uh, liver problems. After we know the patient has MP1 P uh, positive, we do the uh, low wash uh, culture. That's uh, the we got the positive culture, and we give the patient well, the a two week, and. Because of the bone marrow is still positive, we switch to epitalians be two weeks. After that, uh, the bone marrow culture is negative, and um, the liver function uh, re yeah, uh, has been uh, uh, improved. After that, we give the patient antiretroviral therapy, and now the patient is very good. And the CD4 is almost a 200, and the HIV RNA is undetachable. So for this case, we, we can think that uh, if we could make a diagnosis without, uh, for the patient without any um, typical rash or no blood culture funding, and if we could, how we could treat, treat with this patients with so many uh, multiple or, organ uh, failure and avoid uh, drug and drug interruption with uh, antiviral therapy. And the last one, we will talk about a, lit a little about the critical meningitis. Uh, critical meningitis is uh, the big problem for many uh, countries, but in southern China, we have uh, just less uh, cases can compare with uh, less cases than uh, pachymycosis. For critical meningitis, meningitis yeah, WHO recommend to, uh, to screen the antigen for HI positive patients. And you can see the um, prevalence of an, the antigen positive in many, in many countries. But we don't have any data about uh, Chinese patients. Yeah. So it's very important for us to do some to know the prevalence of uh, the antigen prevalence, yeah. And for the treatment of uh, and the critical meningitis, um, there's some, um, a lot of uh, just discussion, yeah, a lot of uh, disputes between the WHO gala and Chinese uh, consensus because China, uh, WHO gala recommend to use amphetamines to be high dose, but Chinese gala, Chinese consensus recommend to use low those amphetamines be but longer time. So that's because, yeah, in our experience, uh, Chinese patients could not endure the side effects of high dose amphetamines be, and for these patients, we have to increase amphetamines be gradually to reach the treatment concentration. And some medicine, uh, for example, fluoxetine, is not available in many uh, areas. And there's another uh, challenge because um, we we usually use a uh, steroid uh, to uh, help our patients to decrease their intracranial pressure. But according to many studies and according to the WHO guideline, it's not recommended anymore. So, yeah, what, what we should do? Yeah, that's that's important. So that's a summary, yeah. There's still a lot of challenges in the management of advanced HIV disease, and we need a more uh, clinical research in the future and to evaluate the novel diagnosis, for example, TB and mp one p and, the, and the, the critical antigens, and we can build the evidence to support screening for many uh, patients with no uh, symptoms uh, for the uh, evidence for preventative therapy, and we need to do some clinical trials to uh, get novel treatment strategies. For example, short course of amphetamine CB, antichromycosis, and uh, critical meningitis. There are a lot of um, challenge for us, even though in the area of antiretroviral therapy. Okay. 
that's crazy. <laughs> I couldn't use that. Yeah, this is the last uh, we want to uh, yeah, thank uh, the staff, the, the fellows in the hospital I'm working in. Yeah, that's the, the, the big family of the hospital. And I want to thank a lot uh, to uh, the tree. Yeah, and uh, thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.